Good morning. Welcome to Storytime with Miss Chante at Manorville Public Library. And today we have a story that is called The Dirty Cowboy. And it's written by Amy Timberlake. And pictures are by Adam Rex. I hope you enjoy this story. Let's get started. At the end of two fence lines and right at the rock called the Praying Iguana lived a cowboy in a tin roof shack. Every morning he called his dog, mount his horse, and spent the day tracking stray longhorns, cattle on the New Mexico range. Every evening, he stroked, stoked his fire and fried up some bacon and beans and potatoes while whistling the streets of Laredo. Now, one morning, and no one knows for sure what drives a man to it, this cowboy decided to clean himself up. Regular bass weren't, would have said the signs had been pretty clear. The cowboy's hair housed 32 fleas and a small gray spider. Can you see those in his hair? And on three recent occasions he had discovered a tumbleweed in his chaps and a fury of flies flocked around his body, buzzing so precisely that he experienced a distinct loss of hearing in his left ear. And the cowboy stench stunk to bypassers like mud splashed up from a wagon wheel. Ooh-wee, he stinks. But, whatever his reason, on this fateful day, the cowboy picked his doodle bug out of his right out eyebrow and said, This old boy needs a bath. It takes most of a day to get to the river. A cowboy travels by five fence lines and turns left at the rock known as Coyote Cries. So the cowboy saddled his horse, packed up 22 strips of jerky, a canteen of water, and a nearly new bar of lye soap, and called for his dog. The dog opened one eye, sniffed the air, and followed his friend, its warm, familiar smell, as though he was following a trail of T-bone steaks. Off they went. That dog knew his cowboy. A long, rumbling ride later, the river came into view. It was a sight for sore eyes. The river idled around red boulders. An afternoon sun sprang, sparkled in the water, copper and gold. The cowboy tied his horse near the water, grass and a bit of shade, and then he removed his boots and spurs. He unfastened his handkerchief and pulled off his socks, vest, shirt, pants, and long johns, and heaped them at the dog's feet. Above the dog's head, he hung his hat on a spraggly bush of screw bean mesquite. Dang! He said, Dog, no one touches these clothes but me. You hear? Hmm. Then yelling, Woo-wee! He runs. 
The cowboy ran naked as a newborn pack of rats straight into the water. He scrubbed his face, his nose, his eyebrows. He leathered his arms. He leathered his legs. He soaked under his knees into his armpits and over his belly. He buffed his toenails until they shone like little moons. He washed behind his ears, around his elbows, and across his Adam's apple. He sang songs about river flowing, cattle lowing, and a cowboy crowing. Water spurted between his teeth and slapped under his hands. Ah! He did a whole lot of scrubbing because he was dirty. When the river ran clear and his skin puckered up like a prickly pear, the cowboy declared his bath was done. He shook himself off and went to get his clothes. Maybe his duds could use a little soap and too. Hmm. Now that old dog was guarding the cowboy's clothes just as he had been told. And as the cowboy got closer, the dog sniffed the air, <sniffs> paused for a look, and then sniffed again. <sniffs> and he observed a lopsided lope and heard worldly signs, both characteristic of his cowboy, but still the dog thought something wasn't right. Where was that sweaty, wild boar like smell that clung to the cowboy like a second pair of clothes where was the smell of the black pepper and mosquito mud and where oh where was the smell of cow that settled it if the cowboy doesn't smell like a cow it ain't a cowboy. So whoever was headed the dog's way wouldn't be touching those clothes. Now remember the cowboy told the dog to watch his clothes, right? Well, Rrr, said the dog, baring both his teeth. Come on, dog, said the cowboy, chuckling. Give me my duds. Rrr dogs backing up until he was spat squat on top of the filthy heap. The cowboy laughed again and reached for his pants, a corner which stuck out from under the dog's paws. The dog took a jump for the cowboy's arm. The cowboy leaped back, tipped over a rock, somersaulted and splashed into the river at the horse's feet. Rear, said the horse, rearing bug-eyed and tripping aside to watch both the cowboy and the dog wearily. What about, at, that's about as funny as a kick in the behind with a sharp toe boot, the cowboy rumbled to himself. Oh, goodness. Dog, the cowboy said, water running off his chin. He pulled himself off. He pulled himself up out of the river. You get, he pointed to the pile of rocks far in the distance that looked like a giant horned toad. He pointed. Urgh said the dog, right, raising his head. You heard me, said the cowboy. Get! Rrr, said the dog. Nothing the cowboy said or did could convince the dog of the cowboy's identity. The dog refused to budge from t atop the clothes. The cowboy picked up a stick and threw it, 
Fitch. Hmm. The dog and the cowboy watched the stick land in a thud a good ten feet away. The cowboy called the dog by his full name. Eunice Stackford, Montana. The dog turned around on the pile of clothes and laid down. He wasn't moving, was he? The cowboy sang the dog's favorite ballad. Biscuits of fire, said the Mexican moon. The dog joined in with a howl during the chorus, but raised his heckles when the cowboy made a grab for the clothes. Finally, when the cowboy noticed the lowering sun getting stuck in time of the cactus, he decided it was time for action. He had wrestled the dog until the dog plane gave up. Heck! The dog only had two teeth. I don't know if I'd want to wrestle a dog, do you? Now, this is the truth, and the horse will testify. Right there and then, that dog, that cowboy, made the biggest dust devil the West had ever saw. Wrestling, dirt swirled into the sky, forming a sticky brown cloud. But the dog and the cowboy didn't notice. The dog was up. The cowboy was under. The dog wiggled sideways. And the cowboy finagled in other ways. Grime got in to everything. Dust stiffened the cowboy's hair. Crept between his eyelashes. And snaked a claim in his eyebrows. The dog's nose turned muddy and his tongue drooped in a wet grip and rival the muck of a pigsty. Meanwhile, dirt sold the clear New Mexico air. The clothing didn't fare well either. All the tussling took its effort. First, the stitching started to give, and then the buttons popped, and then thread on thread gave away with a ripping, sound like cracking before thunder. Pretty soon, that dust devil filled with the color of Long John Red. Neckerchief yellow, socks blue, and even fancy vest purple. Why, it almost looked like a smudgy rainbow. Finally, the cowboy and the dog found themselves squared off over the shirt. The dog had the back of the shirt. The cowboy had the right arm and they were pulling each other in circles, tugging this way and that way. The cowboys collapsed onto his behind. Shoot, said the cowboy. In his hand was the right arm of his shirt, and the back of the, cat of the shirt laid at the feet of his panting dog. Meanwhile, the cactus was now cradling the sun in the crook of one arm. So the cowboy walked over to his horse, pulled a piece of jerky out of his pack, and sat on the rock to gnaw things through. Now, that dog had a chance to sniff again. And slowly the cowboy began to smell in perspective. The dog smelled tumbleweed, prickly pear, and wet mud. When the cowboy wiped his brow, a wash of sweat, wild boar trickled the dog's nose. And finally the cowboy sighed. The cowboy's breath smelled like black pepper 
and cow jerky. It was a dog's cowboy after all. A woo said the dog. But it was too late for apologies. What was done was done. The cowboy found his hat and his boots, but most of all, his clothes were the best set aside for patchwork quilt or for scrub jays making their nest cozy. There wasn't much of anything from the grown cowboy. Not long afterwards, the sticky dust devil cloud crackled open and rained. The cactus burst into blossoms like the firecrackers and suddenly the landscape was dotted with color and ribboned with water. The cowboy sighed and ruffled the dog's ears. Why, look at that! He said, ain't that purty? The dog looked up at the cowboy and licked his fingers. The cowboy laughed. You sure are a sight, he said. Puckering nestles out of the dog's fur and the story goes that the cowboy walked home bare as shown sheep from the river to his tin roof shack. He wore his boots and his hat but otherwise he was naked as a nickel and the horse skittish after all that wrangling was led by his bridle the dog trotted at the cowboy's side, hoping for jerky handouts. The rain fell the whole way home, and the rainwater was so grimy that the fresh soaking didn't clean off the wrestling dirt at all. But as the cowboy looked up into the dust devil sky, he had an idea. Next year's bath, he'd bring a bristle brush. And as the cowboy walked home with his dog, the end. Well, I hope you enjoyed the story of the dirty cowboy because he was super dirty. Tune in next time. Have a great day. Bye.